Secrets of Grandia is a pixel art action RPG calling back to games like The Legend of Zelda and The Secret of Mana, and after an arduous 13 year long development cycle from Freeman Studio Pixel Ferrets, the game finally transitioned from early access into its full release, and what a release it has been, because while it's still early in the year, it might genuinely take out Game of the Year. Ok, maybe my game of the year, but that got your attention didn't it? To summarise the plot, Secrets of Grandia is set in the fantasy world of Grandia, filled with monsters, puzzles and treasure, and individuals called collectors are there to explore and keep everyone safe. You play as a young budding adventurer who aims to follow in their parents footsteps to become a collector themselves, and for that you'll need to take place in the collector exam in the Evergrande City Arena. I hope you're picking up on the naming scheme here. Before you leave, your dad hands you a family heirloom, a raggedy old bag, who turns out to be both sentient and the best backpack you could ever ask for. After obtaining a card from a monster kill, a rare item that only collectors can find and also grants power to the one who wields it, to no surprise you pass the exam and become a collector. Once appointed the role, you are asked to set out upon the world and track down ancient artifacts that are said to grant incredible power, but they could also spell the end of the world in the wrong hands, something that happened nearly a thousand years ago and you must keep that from happening. As I'm sure you've noticed, from the get go the humour is very tongue in cheek and mixed throughout all elements of the game. From cheekily named characters to pop culture references to exaggerated video game tropes, it all fits together to create an interesting world and endearing characters along every step of the way. Minus this rich poncy prick but you do get the opportunity to twat his smug ass around. As the name implies, Secrets of Grindia does indeed involve grinding as part of the game, especially to see all the endings, but in my opinion it counts as the tediousness found in most games with fantastic fast paced combat and the perfect combination of visual and sound effects when monsters die, resulting in an almost slot machine addictiveness when farming enemies. For example, I spent what I thought was 5 minutes farming a rare card and was astounded to find that 40 minutes had actually passed me by. Not to mention the more you kill enemies within an area, the faster they will respawn, allowing for farming to be sped up drastically compared to other games in the genre. Combat is divided up into one handed, two handed and wands, the latter utilising magic, each style having unique attacks or specific combat skills that can drastically change how you fight, as well as items having special effects that can alter attacks or cause entire builds to break and gain astronomical amounts of damage. In addition to the fighting of monsters, a collector's role includes solving puzzles, and oh boy, Pixel Ferrets wasted no time with them. From simple move the block trials to complex teleportation and reality bending sequences, the team's full creativity is on display and will certainly have you scratching your head looking for the solution, or at least it did for me, but I'm a ficky dum dum. Adding to that, boss fights, much like the general public trying to walk in a straight line, proved to be quite the challenge. Utilising a variety of attacks and a sprinkle of bullet hell mayhem, boss fights feel like a combination of solving a puzzle and a fight for survival. One of my favourite showcases of this is the season Hydra fight. Each Hydra has a season specific attack and you have to constantly adjust the seasons during the fight to manage their attacks and prevent yourself from being overwhelmed. It's a genius implementation and it's felt through almost every single boss encounter, keeping them feeling very unique from one another. On top of everything, the battle music is a hell of a jam, and the later boss fight themes are just outright awesome, so much so that I have no doubt they'll be in my Spotify yearly wrap up. While the story and tone of the game come across as lighthearted and kind of goofy at first, it does take on a slightly mature tone towards the second half and establishing that maybe this isn't quite the picnic trip we expected it to be. During my playtime I often drew some small parallels between Secrets of Grindia and Undertale, most notably that Secrets of Grindia does lean into the deconstruction of the RPG genre, as well as the game being a slight meta commentary with quests and dialogue often referencing if not fourth wall breaking the silliness of sending a complete stranger on tasks, as well as the concept of grinding within video games at the promise of power and rewards. Don't be swayed away though if you're expecting to be constantly subverted because the world as a whole is charming and filled with characters that you can't help but be enamoured by, and if anything the roguelite arcade mode will have that 3am just one more run grip around your neck. Simply put, I loved my time with this game and has been on my mind since completing it several weeks ago, so I'd thought I'd use this as an excuse to recommend the game that might slip under the radar to the majority of people. So whether you're an RPG veteran or you only play Call of Duty, I'd recommend checking out Secrets of Grindia, if in the least to experience a game that feels like a labour of love that is filled to the brim with charm, lovable characters, fantastic gameplay and some banger music soundtracks. Now if you'll excuse me, I have another card I need to farm.